Andy Farrell is obviously going to step up as defence coach. You know, he's he's very highly regarded within the squad. What did you make of the appointment and is it the right one? It makes sense. I think um, the RFU all along have said we're going to try and pick from our own pool of coaches. Um, and Philip Brown came out a couple of weeks ago and, and mentioned Farrell and Lancaster um, and a couple others, Easterby as well in there. Um, yeah, it makes sense from their point of view. They're going to get a lot of uh, kind of seamless transition as they're terming it. Um, Farrell's extremely popular with the players, like extremely popular. Mm. And everyone actually in the game who's come across him. Um, so he's already got them on side in that, in that regard. Like there is there is an element of risk involved because he's never been the boss. He's mm. done first team he- uh, first team coach at Saracens, but he had a director of rugby over him. He's done a few different roles, but but never been the guy making the, the biggest calls. So that is definitely going to be a challenge for him. Um, his personality would suggest that he'll thrive on that. He He's a very <laughs> strong, um, very strong character, as we've just mentioned there. He has this kind of like physical aura about him. And mm. um, when you go into a room, because he's such a, a big guy, he's six four. He's he still clearly works out in the gym and stuff, and he kind of tends to dominate the room w- with that kind of aura. There's much more to it than that, though. You know, you can win respect from players with that and with your defensive coaching. But when you're the main guy in charge, when you're dropping players, when you're picking players, when you're giving them bad news when you're overseeing a lot more than just a, a specific part of the game um, and when that relationship changes because an assistant coach is almost almost like a peer at times, mm. you know, he's, he's the one who has that closer relationship with them who can maybe talk to them when they've been dropped, when they've fallen out of the picture a little bit. So that um, management of the relationships is going to be re- really tricky for him, I think. Um, but look, there's loads of positives there. He's clearly a highly, laud- highly regarded coach. He's massively in demand. Even uh, England tried to get him back as defence coach. Um, I'm sure he's had many other offers and and I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, succession was almost part of his contracting or his planning when he when he came over that the RFU had indicated listen there's this opportunity potentially down the line for you. Um, so yeah it makes sense from, from the RFU's point of view but I do think there's the qualifier that it is going to be a challenge for him stepping up into that role and particularly coming after the most successful Mm. Irish head coach of all time a guy who set new expectations and very lofty expectations so um, it's hard to answer is he the right guy I think the he has the qualities certainly there but really we'll, we'll have to wait and see yeah Andy filling Joe's shoes as Murray touched on is it is a big task just that asked Matty O'Connor who obviously took over at Leinster yeah well I, let's not forget that Joe was also an assistant coach mm. only up until he took over in Leinster he was Vernon Cotter's assistant for I think six seven seasons um, and I may be mistaken slightly, but I do think he lost four of his first five competitive Leinster professional yeah. games as head coach. Uh, and and even in know, the media at that time, there was you well, know, great, a bit of you criticism. Know, yeah. Great visionaries like George Hook calling <laughs> for his head on a regular basis. But um, I think Joe was given a little bit of time and a little bit of patience, as all coaches should be afforded longer than a couple of months. Um, and quite clearly has has put in his own imprint um and it's it's gone so deep now into our rugby culture and and how we operate um and I'd like to think as Farrell taking over is given the same opportunity to put his own imprint on because I think it seems apparent he's not the same personality as as Joe um he may for example be working with an Irish, he may be working with an Irish squad maybe where Johnny Sexton is is considering his his future mm. although I've seen lately I think for obvious reasons Lancaster's got into Johnny's head about Tom Brady, Tom Brady a lot yeah. saying, you know <laughs> you're going to going to keep you till you're 40 and it's very <laughs> very legitimate approach if he minds himself but he will he will be dealing with a team in transition after a world cup period hopefully a successful one um and I think we've got to embrace the idea that not everybody is Joe not everybody thinks the same very in fact very few people think the same as Joe and operate the same as Joe and and there will be a new departure and if he's given time to put his own uh, imprint on that team I think the squad that we've developed the strength and depth we've developed on his own personality which has been hugely successful in its own right from his playing days in Wigan to the crossover from league to union with England to coaching with Saracens to successfully defensive coaching with England uh, as an assistant with Ireland assistant with the Lions he's a pretty impressive track record so let's give him a little bit of time to put his own shape on things